playing and I want to talk about tuning some more. So there's a couple things I forgot on my last video. Apparently I'm just playing more than talking. Anyway, um... What was she going to say? I don't, I don't have a script or anything, I'm just rambling away here. One thing I want to say about the advantage with this type of setup with the traditional leather rings is that you can actually the scale of the of the, of the instrument and where it, where the strings lie and the kind of tension is kind of infinitely variable. You know, if you have guitar tuners, it's very flexible too and, and totally functional, I think. But uh, with this, um, I can adjust. Say, say these strings here, I'm like, oh, I like that. It's really bright and loud, but maybe I wanted a little, uh, a little softer, maybe, or a bit more, less ringy. I could, I could actually slacken the strings off by lowering it down, but, but pulling them a little tighter, you know. So, so basically, I'm adjusting the string length and the string tension. So it's kind of quite variable in this kind of situation. And to me, that's a really, a really, a real advantage. But it is, it is. Especially good for tinkerers, <laughs> people that like to fiddle around, like which is me, right? Like I can't leave things alone for uh, longer than ten minutes half the time. So that to me, that's I really love that part of of, of having the core tuned this way. But what another thing I wanted to mention um, on my last video, you know, I, I talked about pushing the string up with both pressure on both ends and then tuning it down. Yeah. But if, sometimes if it's uh, a little, uh, oh, not quite, I'll, I'll actually rotate the ring around the neck, you know, one way or the other. Um, more often towards the center. Um, and you can be... Really, you can be... Just adds to the subtlety. So you can combine the vertical and the horizontal in your tuning. Um, there, there, there is another thing though, uh, you know, I make my own instruments and I, and I make my own music, so, I, you know, I used to play a lot of guitar and, and I really uh, mostly made, made up my own music for it, and for me, I play shamisen and make shamisen as well, and it's just, in a way, the same case. Of course, I listen to a lot of Japanese music and I, I love uh, traditional shamisen music, so all those sounds... Uh, have a huge imp in, um, impact for me, influence, I guess is a better word. Um, but you know, mostly I just like to make up my own stuff. And you know, uh, I've been a musician for since I was a teenager. And you know, my dreams of, or actually it wasn't really a dream, but my thoughts, oh, maybe I could be like a big country music star I wanted to be at one time, like the Dixie Chicks, you know. Uh, but the, you know, that wasn't to be. Um, and in a way, that's, that's really great. You know? So I'm following my own path. And, uh, so the core is really no different. I also pretty much exclusively make up my own stuff. And, and these days, you know, I live in the mountains in northern Thailand, in this beautiful forest. Um, and my, my own music is... My, my own music really wants to find a connection with nature. And not just my music, but my whole existence. And it, it's a long, it's a long journey, and it feels impossible a lot of times. But you know, what are you gonna do? Right? You gotta follow your own way. So here, I'll often sit out here where I am, which is right by the stream. That sound you're hearing is the stream's maybe ten feet away from me. And I'll just listen to the sounds around, around right now. And, you know, now we're hearing a lot of insects. On my last video, you could hear the gibbons, which, which uh, they have this whoop, whoop sound, as well as other sounds. Um, so I'll kind of respond to that and, and bird call as well. And, you know, on occasion, it almost feels like they're talking back. So then it can be kind of, kind of conversation. So these days, I do a lot of playing on my own. It suits me 
just fine in here. Um, but this instrument, the beautiful Kora, is a West African instrument. And although I don't play West African music, I'm not from that tradition, I love it. I love it maybe more than any kind of music. Uh, and the great traditions of Kora playing, as well as other instruments and, and all kinds of things from that part of the world, you know, Mali and Senegal and the Gambia, King Faso, I guess. And, you know, I've never even been to West Africa. But it's such an incredible, incredible deep music. And, you know, if people... I have nothing against people wanting that aren't from there learning it. Why not, right? Um, so, for, but for me, I really just want to play my own things, and that's what I do. So I do it with this instrument. Um, I do it with all the other instruments as well. And you know, part of my actually coming to make this instrument is it feels like a living being when I make them. You know, it feels like a, an animal. And the first time I, the first one I made, it's like wow. It's like a beautiful deer or something, you know, with the, with the horns and everything. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing, as well as making them, you know, and I make them and I try to sell them and try to make a kind of living. But, you know, where I live, I can live very cheaply, so I'm not under any sort of pressure most of the time. That, that's, I guess, I want to talk a bit about how I come to this instrument and kind of honor it and also honor the tradition of it. Um, I'm not too sure what to say. It's kind of a deep discussion in a lot of ways, I think. Mind you, I listen to a lot of West African choral. Tumani Diabate, there's tons of other, Sona Jobate, Jobate, I think, maybe. I can't remember how her last name's pronounced. It's incredible. And, there's not a lot of women out playing chord these days, or traditionally. But it's great to see her stuff. It's gorgeous. And, um, 